welcome back to the Managing Violence podcast YouTube channel. Uh, I'm here again today to give you another book review. So the last one was really well received. Uh, thanks again to Alan Maurice for sending through his uh, Survivor shooting book. Uh, very well, uh, as I said, the, the review was very well received and the book was excellent. It was, a, it was a real pleasure to read it and to review it. Uh, so I'd like to hit you with another review, uh, this time with another one of the texts that I recommend uh, quite regularly uh, for the sake of uh, a general introduction to, to violence management and personal risk management. And that is the book, Can I See Your Hands? by Dr. Gavriel Gav Schneider. Now, uh, Dr. Gav was a guest on the podcast uh, back in season two, I think. Uh, he has a PhD in criminology specializing in use of force decision making. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting field of study. Um, his background briefly is uh, he grew up in South Africa uh, as a martial artist, uh, was uh, quite an accomplished martial artist, ended up moving to Israel, living in Israel for a couple of years, becoming an instructor there, uh, instructing at Wingate Academy, uh, became an instructor under uh, Dennis Hanover uh, of Dennis Survival Jiu-Jitsu, Went back to South Africa, uh, started teaching more there, got involved in close personal protection work and, uh, and wrote his first book called Beyond the Bodyguard uh, while also doing his master's and then uh, did his PhD in criminology, as I mentioned, uh, and, and then moved to Australia. So uh, Dr. Gav has a, has a pretty interesting story. Uh, I recommend you check out that podcast if you haven't already, uh, because it, it is a, it's a really interesting story. Uh, and, and I know Gav quite well, as you'll hear in the podcast if you listen to it. But uh, anyway, this book is, uh, is excellent. So Can I See Your Hands? The Ford is written by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. So you know it's good. Uh, if uh, Dave Grossman's putting his name on it, then, uh, then it's going to be quality. But uh, what I really like about this book, similar to the Survivor Shooting book, which I reviewed last time, is it gives a really good summary of the other top class work that's been done in this field. So um, there, there are a lot of new insights uh, and a lot of clarity and a lot of different ways of interpreting some of the, the, uh, the old tried and tested materials, uh, which I think are very, very useful and unique, even if you have read the other materials. But if you are a beginner, and this is the first book you're picking up on uh, personal risk management, personal safety, you're gonna get a really good tour of the existing learnings and the, the most recommended sources of the most recommended ideas and concepts uh, that uh, that have come through from other authors over the years. So I think that alone makes this a very good first purchase. If you're like me and you've already owned all the other books and you've read all the other books and you've studied it, you'll still get some new insights from this particular book. One of the things that I really like about Gav's work is that, uh, sorry, I'm just flipping through pages. As you can see, my copy, I don't know if you picked it up on the webcam very well. My copy is uh, well and truly marked with different insights. So I reference this book quite regularly. But uh, one of the things I like about Gav's book is it's, uh, it's holistic, but it doesn't try to be more than it is. So uh, talking to Gav, he, he wrote this book with the intention of it being part one. Uh, so he doesn't try to cover absolutely everything in depth. There is, uh, there's, there's room for things to go on. Um, this is the start of personal risk management. So because of that, I think what it does do, it does exceptionally well. Uh, one of the things I really like is he establishes very early what real violence is. So uh, we, we dismiss this idea that it has anything to do with martial arts. We dismiss the idea that it's anything romantic or that should be romanticized or anything that's desirable or pleasurable or in any way positive. Um, while still acknowledging that violence is occasionally necessary. Uh, for most of us living in a first world country, it won't be necessary at any stage in our lives. But uh, just like learning CPR, just like learning how to save someone who's drowning, uh, the consequence of not knowing what to do in if that moment were to happen uh, can be severe. So uh, it's, it's important that we learn the skill while also acknowledging that it's not something we should try to manifest or something that we should be encouraging uh, others to participate in. So I like that idea. Uh, also, the, he goes through very simple concepts such as the fact there are no rules when it's reality, um, that there is quite often multiple attackers, there's quite often weapons, uh, that you'll nearly always end up in some sort of grappling or ground fighting situation, whether that's stand up, clinch, bent over backwards over a car, or whether it's uh, on the ground in the pavement, and it's very unlikely to be on soft matted ground. So we need to consider what techniques and how we're training those sort of environments as well. Um, and also mobility. 
uh, he's very, very big on mobility is vital to survival because the sooner you can get up and get away, the better for you. So uh, if you're stationary, you don't have a whole lot of options. You, your option is basically to fight until the other party drops. And then still you want to get away. So mobility is vital. Coming from a world where carjackings are a, a very common uh, area of, uh, of attack, uh, certainly those concepts could be well and truly applied. Uh, that if you can stay in your vehicle and you can stay mobile, uh, you are, you're much less, uh, you're much harder to target. So I think that's a, it's a really important concept. Uh, Gav then moves into a, a really nicely structured layout of how to deal with personal threat situations, starting with awareness. So uh, Gav goes into a lot of detail and he lectures on this. Lot, he's got lots of videos online and webinars and so on about personal safety awareness. Um, the idea of baselining, understanding your environment, understanding uh, what, what is normal in your environment so you can detect what is abnormal uh, to enable you to better manage those threats and, and become aware of things that are out of place as soon as possible. Uh, one of the other books I will review uh, in the future, uh, which I've, I've actually just finished reading myself, is called Sheep No More. Uh, and uh, that also goes into great detail about awareness and, and identifying threats early. So uh, we'll get into that when we get there. But uh, Gav does a really good job of um, uh, outlining baselining and then also explaining what your intuition is and the, the role that intuition plays. Uh, why we should listen to it, what it actually is on a scientific level, uh, and uh, and really why you need to trust your intuition wherever possible. Um, he also breaks down a, a really simple formula uh, called the three point check system uh, of looking of being able to establish baseline situational awareness within a couple of seconds. I won't spoil what that is, but again, if you're new to this and you're looking for a handbook of how do I make myself safer. This material is excellent. This material will really help get you there. Uh, it's it's basic. It's easy to understand. It's well laid out. Uh, it's highly recommended. Uh, if you've got someone in your life that you want to make safer, but you think they're only going to read one book, uh, this would be probably one of the top five books that I would recommend uh, you consider for that person. Uh, after awareness, we get into assessment. So basically, uh, how, how do you assess the situation? How do you assess the severity of the threat? Uh, how, how imminent is the threat? How grave is the threat? What response options we have available to us? And that's not just assessing the other person or assessing the situation, it's also assessing ourselves. So what response options do I have? Uh, what are my physical capabilities? What are the capabilities of those around me? because your response options, if you are on your own and you're physically fit and you are healthy, are completely different than if you have a rolled ankle and you can't run. Or if you're out with your three children, uh, one of whom is in a pram, uh, because what are you gonna do? You're gonna run away and leave your kids behind? So these are, uh, and do you wanna get involved in needless violence while your children are watching? These are, these are real considerations. Um, and that's all part of the assessment phase. We then move into the action or avoidance. So what are we actually gonna do to resolve this? And this is where we start talking or we uh, fight. Uh, and we go into great detail about the different types of physical responses that are, that are applicable, uh, what options you may have available to you for different levels of threat, whether it's a, an argument uh, or whether it's right up to an active shooter or a terrorism event. So uh, it, go, it goes into a, a, number of, um, a number of different options for you in that space. Uh, and then finally dealing with the consequences of the actions and the aftermath. So Gav talks about the legal ramifications, the physical ramifications, the injuries, um, dealing with emotional injury and, and uh, post-traumatic stress as well as a because that's a reality of dealing with violence and aggression and something that we can't we can't underplay that. That is so important that we understand that violence isn't over when the scene fades to black with a, with a triumphant hero standing victorious, walking off into the sunset. Like, that's not how it ends. The situation continues and it continues in your mind and it continues in your body and it continues in the mind of the other party. Okay, you may have to go to court. You may have to see that person again. You may have your details published. Okay? You may be accused of something. You may be charged with something. You may have to defend yourself. You may deal with this for years and years and years after. And it's very important that we provide guidance. And Gav does a really good job on uh, on outlining that. 
Uh, lastly, uh, there are some uh, really, really useful anxious on, uh, on vehicle security, uh, being secure on different modes of transport. As you'd expect with Gav's background in close personal protection, there's a bit of information about airports, trains, subways, buses, etc. Uh, staying safe in those relatively unsecured environments or at least uncontrolled environments from our perspective. Uh, and, uh, and staying safe on foot, ATMs, uh, and, and also even a little bit of virtual presence. So how do you uh, maintain your security online? Uh, touch, it touches on that as well. Uh, this book has probably more references <laughs> than any other self-defense book I've ever read. And that's largely because Gav's a PhD. It's, it's academically sound. Uh, if I flick to the back right now, um, the bibliography and recommended reading, there are one, two, three, Four, five, six, six pages, six pages of references, academic articles, other books, interviews, and so on. This is excellent. Uh, I've said it over and over. I'm not just not just pimping it because Gav's a friend. This is probably the first book I will get my kids to read when they're old enough to read uh, about keeping themselves safe. So. I can't give it much more higher praise than that. That is, of, of course, unless I've written one that's better. Yeah, just so you know. If I write one that's better, it's probably going to be based on this anyway. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is probably, it's, it's definitely one of the top five books that I recommend for someone who's only going to read one or two books about this. Get this. It'll give you a really good overview. It'll give you some basic concepts. If you are past the basic concept stage and you're well in your development, you'll still benefit uh, from some of the insight uh, and more importantly from the structure and the way it's explained. I think it's, it's excellent uh, the way it's phrased, the way it's, the way it's all put together into a really logical package. Uh, and that ties back into Gav's background as a facilitator and instructor uh, teaching at all levels uh, from martial arts classes through to special forces through to corporate. Uh, the training design elements are really strong and I think that is reflected very clearly in the book. So I'd highly recommend this. It was uh, was nominated as the ASIS Book of the Year in uh, 2018, I think. Uh, so it's it's not just me that thinks it's good. Check it out on Amazon. Uh, the I won't bother giving you a link because it's different in every country. So check it out. Can I see your hands, Dr. Gabrielle Schneider, forward by Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. Highly recommended. You won't regret the purchase. It's an excellent book to gift. Uh, or if you're new to the field yourself, especially, you'll get a lot out of it. If you're not new to the field, you'll still enjoy it. Thanks very much. I'll see you again next time with another review very soon.